Hi, Julia. Hi, Aya. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm doing good. It's interesting times on the news. Yeah, you know, I, I, I really think that people are being pitted against each other on the most petty issues. So I saw something on my, my Facebook, uh, you know, the, the, it just popped up. It's, okay. uh, and I thought I would share with you what it is. I don't want to out anybody. So. Oh, no. You can just Not talk him. about it generally because I'm thinking I probably am seeing similar things, I'm sure. Like Yeah. So okay, so the guy whose Facebook uh you know it status it was, um, is uh a a Facebook friend of mine and he's uh he's gay and he's white and he um he was sharing something that he saw on, I guess, a, a gay dating app, but it was his comment that bothered me. So uh, he said something like, uh, gay Asians have so much trouble already uh, getting dates on dating apps in the United States. Why does this guy have to go and do this? Uh, nobody's gonna wanna have anything to do with him. Okay, and so there's a picture. He just took a, sh a screenshot from this dating app, and it's without the face of the person, but the guy has um, a t-shirt that has Corona on it, Corona, you know, the beer, and he says, oh, this is from the good old days before, uh, before lockdown, and of course the Corona refers to beer, not anything else. And then under that, he had a hashtag that said, all lives matter. And, oh. and the guy happened to have an Indian name. I mean, it was just a first name. So I can't say whether he's Pakistani or Indian from India, but that kind of Indian. Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. Like, basically, he is an Asian. Like, when we talk about Asian people, we mean all of Asia. And people forget that. Yeah. He's of Asian descent. We'll just leave it at that, right? Right. And this this other guy who is gay, who is on that app, and he says, I don't want to out him or anything, but uh, is, he shouldn't have done that because no gay person will want to have anything to do with him because he wrote, all lives matter. Um, oh, and, really? Um, you know what? Right away... He's showing his bias because I hear, I see. No offense to white people, but a lot of white people are really on this kick. Like, lot, like they only care about, like they. If somebody says Black Lives Matter, that's okay. But if somebody says All Lives Matter, it doesn't matter what background they're from. All of a sudden, there's a problem with them. And I'm not in either camp, by the way. I'm not following either of these social. But why is it okay to say one? but not to say, well, everybody should have value. It's not a problem, is it? No, I don't think it should be. And what's weird is, okay, so all sorts of guys agree, you know, it's all his gay friends uh, agreed with him. And then this one guy who happened to be also, I think Indian, again, I'm not sure. I don't want to sound like I'm positive, could be Pakistani, but anyway, had sort of an Indian sounding name. Um, and he said, oh, oh, he said uh, something along the lines of, uh, but a lot of people think that, or a lot of people will agree with that. And the first guy kept going on about how there was research, how Asians don't do well on gay dating apps. So I think they were talking at cross purposes. Uh, and the other guy, you know, the other Indian guy was just saying, you know, a lot of people believe that all lives matter. I think that's what he was trying to say. And so I commented on that and I said, well, maybe he wants to find a like-minded person. Um, so he's sharing that because uh, he wants somebody who believes what he believes, right? I mean, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And okay, here's the thing, like, 
something I see among the white liberals, they share their opinion a lot and they'll say, this is what I believe. I've heard, and that's a stereotype, I've heard some white liberals say they could never date a Republican. And it was like, I didn't know this was a thing now, but it's really important for them to make sure the person is like a Democrat and a liberal when they look at the dating app. And there was even a story about these two white people that this white lady was attracted to this man and he was really sexy, but she found out he was a Trump supporter, so she couldn't date him anymore. So why is it okay for liberal people to put what they believe, but then, I don't know, like an Asian person puts what just simple, like their opinion, and then somebody comes up and says, well, they're not gonna find, I, I just don't, that seems like a I, I don't know what he's trying to say. If this guy actually believes that all lives matter, should he pretend like he doesn't believe that so that he can have somebody for a date for the night? It does, you know what I'm saying? No, he shouldn't pretend that, but here's the thing. I don't even, okay. I don't even say the whole thing like BLM versus, and I didn't even know this was a thing until the other day, BLM versus a, like all lives matter. Some people call it American lives matter. How about just, all people should be treated with integrity and respect. I don't even feel like it has to be put that way. And I have said, I don't think anybody should be mistreated or like, how right. that's my view. And why is it wrong for him to have, I, I don't think he did anything wrong, but I think it will be politicized and it's kind of racist that anybody would say, well, you know, that Asians already have a hard time finding dates. Like, why is that okay to say? Like, if you were to switch that around to another ethnicity, people would be mad. So why is it okay to say that about him? Right. Uh, it, it, none of that ma makes any It doesn't matter. Sense. Yeah, it's not, ma it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, and then, then, then some other people started saying some nasty things that I'm not even gonna repeat, but. Yeah, I don't even think it's like, I think what it is right now is people are being so, divided but my question is what drives these different movements like who's behind them who wants people to be that divided that's my question yeah and so then i was i was scrolling down my feed and i saw one of my libertarian friends who also is a christian because a lot of libertarians in my circle happened to be Christians, and she was seemingly saying she was trying to be supportive of, I guess, Black Lives Matter by quoting Jesus saying, uh, blessed are the poor, or something like that. Um, and she's, it, it, there was kind of like a meme that said, why just blessed are the poor? Does that mean if you're not poor, you're not blessed? Uh, and, and that kind of uh, argument. So, you know, not being a Christian, I said, Listen, this is a valid question to ask. Uh, a lot of people think that Jesus was a socialist. I'm not saying that he was, but he did say some things that sort of privileged the poor and went against the rich. And that whole thing about a rich man not being able to pass through whatever heaven, the gate of heaven or whatever, uh, any more than a camel through the eye of a needle. Um, kind of, it, it reflects badly it's, it's on the eye. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of confusing to people. And honestly, there's a lot of things that... Right. So yeah. thankfully, I didn't get in trouble. I thought after a while, I thought, oh, I haven't heard from her. She might have deleted me or something, but she didn't. Yeah. Uh, uh, but what she said was, no, he wasn't a socialist because, you know, I, I knew that she wasn't a socialist. And so being a follower of Jesus, she wants him not to be a socialist either. Um, yeah. But she said, no, it's just that if you're attached to things and people, then uh, it's harder to be good, you know. Uh, and that's also why he told people to forget about their families, you know, to leave their family behind. Yeah, it does say that. And that's just kind of like, wow. It's, it, that sounds... Like, if we had a modern version of that coming out right now, people would be like, cult, but now, but, but big yeah. churches will follow that. And I have nothing against Christianity. I was raised in a nominally Christian. Yeah. 
I know. Okay. And I don't either. I, I absolutely don't. But I was always confused by a lot of things. Like there are a lot of things in the New Testament that I find very confusing. Like I'd be like, how does that work? It can be confusing. <laughs> I just, right. I and I, you know, I was just trying to sort of remind her that not everybody is a Christian. So if you choose uh, to quote some of his, some of the statements that he made, not everybody's going to agree with those, you know? Yeah, that, no, definitely. And then it, it just, it's a slippery slope because I, I think it's one thing if like, okay, I don't want to tell somebody they can't share their opinion because she can definitely share. Oh, her sure. Opinion. Sure. It was on her, her feed. No, she can definitely do that. Yeah. But I'm just saying in general, like when you start quoting a religion, a lot of people aren't going to be able to relate. I guess that's all I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, actually among the libertarians, they've been relating to Black Lives Matter through the idea that many of the teachings of Jesus were about, you know, there's somebody else was using a different parable about a guy, uh, I guess a shepherd going after one sheep when, when the rest of the flock was okay. Mm -hmm. um, and, and saying, so that's the same way because black people are under a lot of um, prejudice and oppression. Therefore, we, we sh it's okay to go and take care of their problem and not worry about all the other people who get discriminated against. Okay, that's interesting. I hadn't gone that deep into it, but I find it interesting too. I think there are a lot of people in the libertarians that are like more like atheists or just not religious. Like how are they like? Yeah, no, no, I, I know. I. I guess most of my friends are right libertarians. You know, there are right libertarians and left libertarians. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying, yeah. Uh, and I, I, you know, I usually it doesn't bother me at all what anybody believes. It, I don't care. Oh, but, no, definitely, yeah. But this is starting to worry me because I think they are misapplying that particular parable. That parable is the same thing as if you have 10 children one of them is injured. You're going to rush that one to the hospital. You're not going to rush the other children to the hospital because they're fine. I get that. But when everybody is being preyed upon by the police and all of us are scared to say, you know, when one person gets murdered to say, instead of saying murder is wrong, police brutality is wrong to say black lives matter, there's something wrong with that there's a bad feeling about it you know yeah no I mean it makes me feel awkward like okay this is why this is where I feel like awkward about it is that there are a lot of problems in this country with police in general with policing in general some of them might be racist but I think one of the bigger problems is they target a lot of people yeah they have killed a lot of people and some of those people are white some of them are Hispanic some of them are other races not just black you right. Know, I don't think oh. I think we should talk about the brutality problem of, and not just say, oh, it's just that that's one thing. That, yeah, I think All right. so so about. if we take that particular parable with a sheep or, or with children or whatever, it's like there's a family where everybody is sick, but they only take care of one child. That's wrong. Or the the shepherd uh there are wolves attacking the entire pack, but he loves this one little sheep. So he saves that sheep and he allows the wolves to decimate the rest of the pack. That's mm -hmm. what it's like. And it bothers me that they're using those parables in that way. Oh yeah, it, it's a little like, wow. Well, I'll tell you why it bothers me more though, and not even if somebody doesn't use that parable is that I think that they're saying, like I feel like right now they're saying that if you don't just talk about one topic, that you're not supposed to post anything on the internet. That kind of bothers me, like making people feel guilty. And I think a lot of people will go along with that. They'll be like, um, well, like I was sharing the other day, I didn't get specific about it because I don't want to call anybody out either. There was this girl, she kind of supports Black Lives Matter, which is fine, she can do that. But she mm -hmm. was saying she couldn't, like, she could not post any content that week during the protest because it would be disrespectful to the protesters because her channel is just about beauty 
And I thought that was kind of strange because we're supposed to stop doing everything whenever one group of people say we only can talk about this. To me, that sounds like kind of like a dictatorship because you're saying, like, what if there are people like just throwing out there, they're just not political people. They're kind to everybody. They're not rude. They're not stealing things from people. They treat everybody with consideration, but they just want to be on YouTube. I don't know, posting cooking videos. Like, why do you care? And I don't, and I just worry that if we start saying things like that or start having a day where we're supposed to all do the same thing, that there are, and I don't know if this happened or not, but I'm just worried that somebody like that might be targeted just because they're choosing not to be political. And it kind of happened before with Taylor Swift, I think. I mean, I don't know if her political opinions have changed. I don't really follow her, but I do know a few years ago, some people were accusing her of being a Republican simply because she didn't share political beliefs and because she didn't promote the Democratic Party. So I don't know. I, I just get worried when they when people start saying we have to do something and you're not a good person if you don't follow this movement. I don't yeah. think that's right. Yeah, well, I, they do seem to want to police what we can or cannot say. And it seems as though all the media is on one side. And how did that happen? You know why, though? Because, okay, I never wanted to believe this before. I was always like, oh, the media is open-minded. They, they, um, they agree with many views. And, oh, like, you know, Hollywood. Not that I care because I don't watch that many movies anyway. Like, people aren't, they aren't all this way. Like, when, when, when okay, not to stereotype, but, like, when a conservative person used to say, oh, well, you know, all the media is liberal and blah, blah, blah. And I used to be like, oh, that's kind of silly because we have like op-eds like in different papers. Some are more conservative, some are more liberal. Brian Mulch made a good point about that the other day and he's right. But overall, I do think that there is one view that you see on CNN and another view you see on Fox News and they kind of pit each other against each other. And then they get Americans kind of riled up depending on which media outlet you're following. And MSNBC is worse. And I can tell you that because I don't watch them. I don't watch their content. But just talking to people who watch it a lot, they start telling me certain things. And I'm like, uh, I kind of see where this is going. And that's more of an opinion than like actual facts. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't watch any of the mainstream media, but I'm talking about, you know, things like Twitter and um, YouTube and Facebook. Those yeah. all. Those all kind of do that too, a little bit to some degree. Um, in my personal, just for my, like, I like to know what's going on in the world, but just for my personal mental health, I have to kind of step back when I start seeing that happen because, okay, some people can post about this day and night and they seem okay. And they're like, yeah, I feel good. But I don't know, like after a while, I'm like, doesn't it make people feel kind of sick to think all the time that somebody else is a bad person because they're not doing something this way or they're not saying that I just feel like it's so divisive and like why like are people spending their time like that I don't know but I could be off base I'm sorry I just find it very divisive well it is very divisive but what I'm wondering is why the power all seems to be on one side um well I'm going to tell you why because it's a great way to sway an election and if a Democrat didn't win last time and you have an even weaker candidate like look I didn't love Hillary Clinton certainly didn't love her but Joe Biden like we've always kind of seen him as a joke even like back when I was a big Democratic supporter he was always kind of like the jokester guy like the guy that would go eat a hot dog like it was just kind of a joke and then people laughed last time when he was running for president they're like oh my god like it was a joke and he he that out pretty quickly and then okay you have these really strong candidates like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and others and all of a sudden that have like real personalities they're just not contenders anymore and all of a sudden people are saying it's Joe Biden and I don't know when that happened like when did everybody get together and decide all of a sudden it was him? I I don't really know I think did they hold a convention? I don't think no, they, they didn't. But the Democrats are really good at doing this, and this is why I would never vote Democrat again, especially now. Um, it doesn't really matter who the popular people support at the convention. This happened with Bernie Sanders. Somebody wrote a really 
just mean, nasty um, blog posts about this, about how this is why I didn't want to be a Democrat anymore, because of what this guy did. He said that this girl, like, throwing a fit, she was, a, he called her a millennial brat for Bernie Sanders because she stood at the, on the convention floor and said, you didn't even give the popular vote for the primaries consideration. You just went with Hillary. And, and he was calling her a brat. And he said, well, she should just have napalm thrown on her or something. And he said that in a blog or set herself on fire. And it was just really gross. And I said, really? I said, you're, you're okay saying that? So I was like, if this is how Democrats think, I'm not even saying that they all think that way. But you read all these kind of things and Democrats would always say, Republican people are so mean, like they're so like bigoted and this, but then I know that's not true because I have friends who are Republicans and they're social workers and they do things to help people, like very community minded people. They just happen to be conservative in their values. But then Democrats say some really mean things and that's okay. So I don't buy all this anymore. I, I might be going off on a tangent, but they probably just want Joe Biden to be president. Maybe well, president. yeah, but the question is why? Uh, so I saw this meme that's, that showed Joe Biden saying that uh, whoever the vice presidential candidate running with him is going to be, should be prepared to be president from day one. <laughs> of course they should be. <laughs> Joe Biden's a joke. You know, Dick Cheney, okay, you might have hated Dick Cheney, you might not have loved Dick Cheney, but you knew that man was running the country, not George Bush, because he's like, ha, 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 I'm reading a book upside down, and oh, I can't open the door. You knew Dick Cheney was running the show until yeah. the second term, when Dick Cheney got kind of mad, because I guess George Bush got some other advisors, because all of a sudden, oh, I guess the war in Iraq's not so popular, so I'm going with some other opinions, and he kind of took some Dick Cheney's power away, but we knew who was running the show like then, okay? So in this case, Joe Biden wouldn't be running the show. Just like Donald Trump, I don't think he's really running the show. He just has a rotating with, like table of people that are really pulling the strings, but everybody's well, like, it's Donald hey, Trump. So, so here's wh where we get to it, you know, how do we know it's not the same people running the show, no matter who the president is? It could be. I, I've begun to wonder that myself, like not to be a conspiracy theorist, but I've kind of begun to wonder that. I don't know. Okay. All right. So. There's nothing wrong with conspiracy theories. It's just a theory. But yeah, maybe they just want people to take turns. They do this in Russia, by the way, where they take turns. So they don't accuse Putin of being a dictator, but he takes turns with a different, um, a different leader in the cabinet being president, but everybody knows it's really Putin that's like, been in power since 2000. 1998, actually. It's been a long time. He's a dictator, but maybe that's kind of what we're doing too, because guess what? Oh, Clinton's Bushes, Clinton's Bushes. Oh, well, we had Barack Obama, but I guess like the Kennedys supported him, so that was another big family. That's how he got in, by the way. He wouldn't have gotten there if it weren't for Robert Kennedy being like, I like Obama, and of course Hillary was mad about that. So who did he have to make Secretary of State, like the second most powerful? Oh, Hillary. So it's the same people probably running the show, just taking turns, creating the friction. Well, I would like to know who those people are. Well, they're the elite families in Washington, D.C., like on the East Coast. Are you sure? Because I could be wrong. Who do you think? <laughs> right now, I think it's China. You know, I, I, I mean, to some degree, yes, but okay, we can't just come out and say, well, the Chinese government's running the country, but we do know that we're in debt to China. And they did say 10 years ago, well, the Chinese government came out and said 10 years ago, you're in such debt to us. I don't see how Social Security is sustainable. Like, they just out, they said that out loud. But yeah. Probably. I mean, everything that's going on seems to be designed to tear the country apart. Mm -hmm. So if people protest, go out and protest against being uh, held prisoner in their own homes and not being allowed to assemble, and they do it peacefully, that the media tell us that they are bad people. But if people go and riot in the streets, and break windows and steal things and burn down buildings, that's okay. It's Those not things, okay. But yeah, you no. Know, you know, I know, yeah. Now, what I'm saying is, 
who would want to do that if they weren't trying to destroy the United States? I agree. I mean, I feel really sad right now because, okay, um, I just feel really sad because I know that business owners that wanted to reopen their businesses are not evil people and they weren't all violent. And some of them were having a non-political peaceful protest in our city, but people were mad because they weren't wearing masks. Well, guess who next week, two weeks later, did the same thing? People that were doing Black Lives Matter. And a lot of them weren't wearing masks either. And I don't even think people should have to wear the mask. Like this mask thing is so divisive and it's really popular in China. And now you hear a lot of people say, well, people aren't wearing their mask outside. No, a lot of people aren't. Oh, people, it's like, I'll tell you this, a lot of restaurant workers, a lot of people like at the ocean, they're not wearing their mask, but I don't really think that makes a difference. Like to me, I do think the virus could be deadly, but I think it was politicized. Yeah, so have you heard anything about another outbreak in China at this time in a market in Beijing? Is there another outbreak? I haven't been following that, is there? I, again, it's not that I heard the news, but I follow this lady who gives us um, daily briefings about COVID-19. And she said, there is a, a market where 10,000 people go in Beijing and it provides the fruit and vegetables for most of Beijing. And uh, there was an outbreak there just recently. Happening here too, because here's the thing, they won't tell people at a supermarket that, oh, guess what? Like there was a worker that had COVID-19. If they recovered and their test is negative 21 days later, they're allowed to work again. So they will tell some people that work at that store but this could be a very, very busy store, by the way. And they won't tell, like, so I assume it could, that there are many people that have had it, and we don't know. So I feel like, too, like, now they were going to let us reopen things more, but now all of a sudden you're hearing, well, we can't reopen this casino because these people had COVID-19. Um, these gyms have to close down because um, either something due to bankruptcy, but it sounded more like they were afraid somebody might have, and it also happened in our courts that somehow one of the courtrooms was going to start having hearings again, but some, like the judge or the bailiff had been exposed. So it seems like we were trying to reopen, but now they're saying things might not be able to reopen as quickly because they started discovering people had it. But I think they were just testing people more so it became more aware of people having it. I don't think it's a new, I don't think the numbers are jumping that high. I think that just more people are testing. Yeah. Well, do you know anything about what's happening with the airlines? I don't. Can you tell me about that? Because I haven't been following that angle. Well, this is just word of mouth, but you know how they lowered the prices of the flights quite a bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I thought, you know, if one or two brave people wanted to fly, they would probably be in an empty airplane. Well, that's not what I heard. What I heard is the prices are so low that the airplanes are full and they're not leaving six feet between any two passengers. Oh, no, definitely not. So how is this part of the whole health thing, you know? It's not. Okay, I want to be honest. This scares people. I rode the bus a few times back when they were calling it the COVID-19 bus. I, not every day I tried to limit it, but if I was running late to work, I did. You had to enter through the back and wear a mask, you had to, but now they've looked at that, and if you do want to write it, you still enter through the front again, but they have a sign saying, well, if you want a social distance, you should just try to do it, but if you can't, then we're not responsible, and they also say they're going to limit it to 20 people, but we know for a fact that sometimes there's 35 people on a bus or something. I haven't been on one that crowded, but I've rode the bus a couple times when it wasn't super crowded, but I do know some of the lines in San Bernardino, people say have 35 people on it. So it's the same thing, I guess, as the airline, really. And when it was free, a lot of people were riding it because you could just get on and off all the ding dong day. And people were, from what I heard. Yeah. Well, I mean, the one thing that I thought would be good about all of this spacing and distancing is, you see, I never enjoyed being crowded like a sardine <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. 
Uh, so I thought, yeah. So I thought, hey, maybe it would be possible to travel by coach and still have not be, you know, rubbing elbows with everybody. But I guess it doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. And I've also learned too, like, okay, if you need to shop, the stores are always crowded except for like at night, at like near closing time, unless it's Walmart, which near closing time there, the line's really long. But some stores are just more crowded now because a lot of people aren't working. And I think people are going to the store to socialize more or something. I don't know what's going on. But I'll tell you, you can't ever go to a store anymore and just get something quickly, ever. Well, at our Walmart, they count the people coming in and going out. And they're, I, I forgot what the number is, but it's like 269 people. Uh, it's a super Walmart. And it, if you, they won't allow more than 269 at a time. Yeah, there are some other stores I've heard, like Marshalls or Ross, when they reopen, they're doing the same thing. I think Vaughn's here is doing the same thing, but our little Walmart, it's just a smaller Walmart. They're not really doing that. They just put signs saying social distance. So people don't really do it. I mean, I don't know. And I just try to stay away from people as much as I can. But okay, I always so did. You know, that's what's so funny about me. I've always tried not to bump into other people. <laughs> so it, it's kind of funny. My normal life is to social distance. Yeah, you're, you've done it all the time. So I think you'll be fine. I mean, you know how to do it. You, but a lot of people are freaking out because they didn't know how to do it. Some people just are like, okay, even now, when you work with the public, sometimes like you have to back away because people are coming up and they're asking why there's no public bathrooms open. And I'm like, well, a lot of things aren't open right now. And I kind of had to back away from this person that got really close to me. And I'm like, no matter what, I don't want to be that close to somebody, but then, I mean, I just don't, but some people just, I guess they're not too worried. I, I don't know, but yeah. I, I don't know what to say. Okay. I do know that the virus is deadly and it can spread easily, but they keep saying different things. Like they were beginning to say last week that it might not be as contagious as we thought, but then they had to backtrack it. And why did they have to backtrack it all of a sudden in saying that? I don't know. Uh, I'm concerned about this whole mask thing. Uh, but Nassim Taleb seems to really like the masks. And I don't know what to say about that. But he also, I mean, I think he's libertarian on some things. But he also seems to really like some things that Ralph Nader likes. And I know Ralph Nader is definitely not a libertarian. He's kind of for the EPA and things like that. So I think I like Nassim Taleb's thoughts on a lot of different things, but he might not be super libertarian in some aspects of his thought process. Is that, I don't know if that's fair to say or not. Yeah, well, I think he's thinking about statistically um, the point of contact uh, from one person to the other, et cetera. But I don't think he's thinking about how uh, this actually requiring the, the mask actually endangers the health of a number of people who have trouble breathing to begin with. It's really hard to breathe with the mask. Like, I can show you different masks I have. Do you want to see? Oh, sure. And tell you which ones. Like, I don't love the mask, but some are better than others. I hate them to be honest with you, but I only wear them so I don't get dirty looks at the store because we have to wear them at work. This kind I bought at Walmart, they're paper masks. You have like 25 of them, but I'd rather wear this because I can breathe more in it. These, after I wash, they get too tight that they begin to pull on my ear. And there was this one thing that we were talking about at work. There's a thing, have you heard of COVID ear? No. Where because of COVID-19 having to wear the mask, you start getting like a big like pressure uh, on the back of your ears. So now people are calling that COVID ear. But yeah, I don't really love the mask or anything, but I wear it just because I don't. Sometimes you have to in a work environment or if you go to the store here, 
people will give you a dirty look if you don't wear one. So that's basically why I wear it. I don't really feel like it keeps me safer, to be honest with you, though, because you have to readjust it. And I don't think people are washing or cleaning or throwing away the mask every day. So I, I question how clean it is. Are people touching their face more? Some people, I guess, are very perfect. They never touch their face. Good for them. But I got chastised for touching my face a lot. Like, oh my God, you touch your face, you touch your face, you touch your I, I wear glasses, so yes, I move them around a lot. I push my hair back. But what am I supposed to stop living because of a virus? Like, I'm supposed to, like, change my... It's simple. And between glasses and a mask, and if you wear your hair up or it's long, you're going to get a headache anyway. And people don't seem to get that, but it's so true. So this one's a little bit better. Uh -huh. I guess where they're made. Oh, what a surprise. It's made in China. Yeah. So is this one? This one was just sewn for me, but uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say about all this. It's pretty. Yeah, I, I don't love them, but I just, it's not that I'm trying to cave to social pressure. But I'll tell you this: when I'm outside, I don't wear it. And did I tell you the story that I had when I was walking home one night? No. Okay nights ago these people they had the mask on all the way up to their eyes like and they were out walking outside like outside of their house they were out for a walk and they were looking around and then they saw me and they jumped off the sidewalk into the street and started walking in the middle of the street to get away from me on a very busy street I mean nobody was coming right then they're lucky but they were just so scared when they saw me that they had to jump into the street so I was just like okay well, I, I saw a man and a woman walking in Bloomington. The woman had a mask and the man did not. And I think that's kind of typical. Yeah. Um, more women wear them than men. And that also is going to be very similar to a uh, certain Islamic <laughs> uh, yeah, it, custom. So basically, you can kind of see where people think. I hate to say this, or their their opinions on things like by whether they're wearing the mask out, out walking outside, you kind of know how they feel about it. Yeah, it kind of like literally marks you in a way. And somebody yeah. looked at me surprised because I walk around outside without it. But I'm not gonna walk outside with the mask on just to make me feel better because <laughs> I'm not gonna pass out in a hundred degree weather to make you feel safer. And a couple of weeks ago, like three weeks ago, before they removed the mandatory outside mask ordinance, a lot of us were still walking outside anyway without the mask. Because they said it wasn't like they were, it was still recommended, but it was more like you needed to wear it inside all the time, no matter what. This lady said to me as I walked by her and her friend, that some people just don't believe the virus is real because I wasn't wearing a mask. But did they say that to the protesters a couple of weeks ago that weren't wearing the mask? No, there's a double standard. And did you know that uh, in New York, uh, there's a lawsuit being brought by uh, a group of Catholic priests and Orthodox Jews uh, protesting the fact that the, um, the social distancing orders are being applied disproportionately to some groups and not others yeah i can see that would happen i look i felt like that was one thing too like i was kind of scared of when we started talking about social distancing that yeah. it was going to start maybe making people feel like they could bully certain groups of people yeah i was concerned about that to be honest with you i also am really tired um okay this is not really even about COVID-19 or anything, but right now with all the protesting going on, you know, some people live in a European country that was predominantly white before people immigrated to that country, right? Many European countries are. There are countries in the world where people are white. Yeah. And I don't think it's a crime to be who you are, is it? No, of course but not. But I feel like some people are being made to feel like, okay, Yes, there could have been a leader of a country like Leopold II. He was the leader of Belgium during a time when Belgium was colonizing the Congo. However, he didn't go into the Congo personally and do like atrocities against people there. 
But right now, they um, in, in Belgium, they're um, vandalizing and they had to take down the statues and saying that they should remove them because of him being in power during a time when these things happened. But here's another interesting parallel. African countries, Central African countries, were heavily involved in the slave trade against other Africans. And there was an Afri African genealogy documentary that talked about this, okay? Where the man is African American, and he talked about this. And I don't know if people forgot, but there were African countries that had slaves that participated in the slave trade. Um, modern slavery hasn't disappeared, especially in some countries where people are essentially treated like slaves. I mean, I, I don't know. Do people not know these things maybe? So why are we taking down a statue in one country because the leader happened to be European? I, not to digress, but I just didn't think that was right that we're gonna destroy a statue just because the leader of the time was ruling the country when something bad happened. And he wasn't directly responsible for those things. You know, there's also another way of looking at all of this. You know, the statue is a work of art that was created by an artist. And if you tear down that artwork, you are destroying the legacy of the artist, regardless of what it is that the statue depicts. Yeah. So, it's, uh, you know, it's anti-art, it's anti-history, uh, it's, you know, anti-intellectual, really, to destroy. It's very, oh, but they are also saying this about Gone with the Wind, which, by the way, I don't love the book, I don't love the movie, I think Scarlett O'Hara's character is just, like, a diva, like, she's very, like, self-absorbed, I never really loved it, okay, but now, apparently, I guess some, like, pay-per-view outlets are not going to carry it anymore because of what it depicts but that was american history the civil war so people are like this belongs in a museum or in a history class but how are you going to learn history if it's not accessible to you as a person because the most history i learned was on my own when i was young reading on my own or watching a movie on my own and wanting to read things on my own not based on just lectures in a classroom yeah besides which it's a book if you start, you know, regardless of that, it could have been science fiction. Somebody wrote that book. Yeah. You throw that away. They do. And, and, you know, you might not like, okay, you might not like the subject matter of the book, but it was a, it was the most popular book during the summer of 1936. And I guess, but then again, we have to remember that they took away the Laura Ingalls Award, which I thought was pretty ridiculous as well. Like, there's a lot of things I don't really think are right if you support the arts. But I guess you support the politicized government sponsored arts, maybe. <laughs> if you're well, right. That's why I never uh, I never supported the government being involved in the arts. Mm -hmm. uh, being an artist myself, being a writer myself, I know that I will never get one of those grants. So it's basically taking money away from some people and giving it to other people. Yeah, it basically is, and it's unfortunate, but to me, it, it might be better because maybe it means that independent artists can, you won't be able to probably be on a major outlet, though. I feel like they're trying to control the message, like, and here's another angle where some people were kind of upset because there was a textbook that didn't even mention George Washington, even though he was the first president of the United States. It's as if people didn't want people to know who our presidents were and how the government works and then and you don't think that you don't think china is behind that um, i kind of do uh, i think china would definitely be behind that because they did the same thing in their own country the reason i love the book mao's last dance or in the movie i read the book first but the reason i love the book in the movie was um Li Xuanzen, when he was younger before he was um selected to be in madame mao's school he found this beautiful story once that somebody had ripped up, it was like a book that had been ripped up. It was about an industrialist, I guess, in Chicago and how he had this beautiful like love relationship with some lady, but he realized he wasn't supposed to be reading this book because it was about somebody that was bourgeois. So he had to get rid of the book, but the book had been destroyed. But that's kind of the mentality that is being promoted right now. Like, yeah, it does sound like a Chinese back thought process for sure. 
Right. Because, I mean, what, you know, what American would want to destroy America? Come on. America that loves America wouldn't want to destroy America. We're still patriotic Americans and our yeah. family. We right. love the country. And we like our flag. Um, you don't, I'm not saying anybody has to say the Pledge of Allegiance or anything like that. I don't think that should be forced on anybody. But what I don't like is if somebody flies an American flag, you know, that was a being equated with being racist during the protest by some people last week. Loving your own country and flying the flag. So there was actually an African-American man that had to explain why he likes the American flag because he loves American history and he supports the Union side. But I was like, why do we have to do that? Like, are you kidding me? So we we live in America and you can't even fly the flag of our own country. Yeah. That's absurd. But you do go up to like parts of, you know, Minnesota where on some streets there would just be one family flying the American flag. And I'm not like, look, immigrants who came to this country because they love this country, that's one thing. But it was kind of this idea that people shouldn't love the country and they should have loyalty to a religion over our country. Like, that was kind of the theme in this one community. But what religion? What, what are you talking about? It was Islam. Like, oh. I have nothing against Muslims. I have nothing against Muslims, but there was this one community where nobody on that street flew the American flag except for one family, and they were predominantly um, Muslim, and I'm not trying to, if they could do that, that's fine, but it was just, somebody was just commenting that this street in previous years had many families that flew the American flag, and it's not a criticism of anybody in particular, but I love our country, and I don't want our country's heritage to be eradicated because some people are not okay with it. Yeah, no, I think every family should decide whether they want to fly the flag or don't want to fly the flag, but nobody should be able to force someone not to fly the flag if they want to. And, yeah. And, and as far as the history goes, they shouldn't be hiding the history. And if they're not teaching American history in the public schools, why do we need those public schools anyway? Well, Right now, I don't think they're going to be so useful anymore because I'm hearing there's going to be like this hybrid model where you can go to school and do some of it online. And it kind of became a joke this past year because, oh, are you passing like as of March? You don't need to log in. You don't need to do anything. You're going to get an A or a B, whatever you had. 10% was all you could change it. But, oh, like, if you were failing, you better make sure you're logging in and doing that. But you're only going to be able to raise your te grade 10%. So it made no sense. A lot of kids were like, okay, whatever. Like, it's 10% difference. What's the difference? And they're not going to fail anybody anyway. So not a lot of kids were logging in to do the assignments. So I, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> and, look, I think I'm not trying to, make, like, criticize anybody. I just feel like. I don't know when it became so unpopular to be American in your own country. Well, I mean, I think we should just think about why that would happen. And I'm sure the people, the American people, did not want this to happen. So there's somebody behind it, okay? That's all I can think. Yeah. But I digress. I don't want to sound like I'm judging anybody. It's just my own opinions, that's it. No, that's okay. That's, that's all right. I just have trouble understanding the people who do not have any trouble with the double standard that they're having right now with regard to, okay, stay at home, stay safe, wear a mask, do that, unless you're a rioter, uh, in which case none of that applies. Yeah, it just doesn't apply, does it? And you might be a peaceful protester during the day, but here's the problem. Did those, did, did the, that protest coming to town all of a sudden make it okay to say on social media, well, maybe you should go up to that city and destroy their businesses? Because if it was a completely peaceful protest, which maybe it was, why did all of a sudden people started saying that on social media? It just, like, it, I'm not saying, look, 
maybe many people were there to have a peaceful protest, but I will be honest, one of the slogans was there's no justice until there's, there's no peace until there's justice. And that, I don't know how you interpret that. Well, for me, uh, obviously, that would be nice if it were true, but we had a lot of peace after the slaughter of the Branch Davidians, and there was no justice. Well, yeah, but once again, I hate to say it at the end of the day, I don't, I don't have a problem with them. I knew they were a diverse group of people, but I think people just at the end of the day didn't care because it was written off as a cult. And in this country, if you're written off as a cult, nobody cares about you. It's a great way to just excuse anything, really. I don't agree with that, but that seemed to be like the popular opinion from people in the media at the time, or just adults. That well, what happened to freedom of religion? I thought that was part of the things that we cherish as Americans. We did. We used to cherish freedom of religion. That was just so important at one time, but it seems like as the generations have progressed more into our modern era, it seems like people don't really they don't remember the Constitution. I, I think it's still a double standard. If the if some particular religion were attacked that is near and dear to the liberal extreme, then I think uh, there would be riots. So it's not really true, you know, that nobody cares about a cult. Depends on what kind of cult it is, okay? Yeah, it probably does because of the leader in the cult, like if he was stereotyped, a certain way and that's probably part of it yeah i'm not i don't agree with what happened i think that was really horrible that never should have happened and it's sick it's sick but. yeah like, like right now uh rand paul is uh introducing some legislations against no knock warrant and he's naming it after do you know uh who he's naming it after brianna Oh yeah, Brianna, yeah. I know he's a big advocate of her family. But I think her case was a little bit different than George Floyd. Like she was pretty innocent. Yeah, no, she, she was innocent and I'm all for it. Yeah. And the thing is, there was a no knock warrant at the beginning, the very beginning of the Branch Davidian tobacco. And so I am all for Rand Paul's legislation and it's fine to name it after her, but let's not forget that this was an issue that we brought up many times before nobody listened, you know? Yeah, no, they wouldn't listen, but now I guess it got national attention for some reason. Well, there was national attention on the Branch Davidians. Oh yeah, there were, there were, but people kind of hated them. Yeah, because they hated me, them. The mainstream media demonized them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and when you were like, okay, well, let me just put it this way. It was confusing what was happening. I knew it was wrong, but if you were just watching CNN, you didn't get the impression that that they were like normal people. It just, they kept saying- Who cares how whether they're normal people? Well, I don't care. I don't care, yeah. but that's what they kept portraying them as. They just kept saying, well, I'm just conveying what uh, they said. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't I, agree with that. I'm just saying. I, I'm saying that apparently uh, you basically have to be black before somebody notices that murdering you is wrong. Uh, it, there's just something very weird about that. It's very odd, and I don't know why that is, but not a lot of people were upset when that because he was a former police captain. You didn't hear a lot of outrage. And I actually, there were some African-American people that pointed this out and they're Republican and they're very conservative. They're like, how come nobody was really upset about that security guard? I guess he was the former chief of police when he got killed and he was just trying to restore yeah. order. Why were people not upset about that? But they were very upset about George Floyd, who, by the way, this is one detail that they just don't want to talk about is that he held the pregnant woman at knife point, pointing a knife at her stomach so they could rob her house. Why is that detail, like what happened to him was horrible. That never should have happened to him. But nobody talks about the things that he did to people. Like he, 
what he did then, that wasn't where he's like, hi, I, I be nice to you. That was like, I'm threatening to kill you in a very, very, very violent way. Unless you give me your money. I mean, nobody talks about that really. And there was actually an African American woman that was talking about on TikTok. She's like, why is everybody upset about him, but they're not upset about Brianna, who yeah. was an innocent? That's my only point. Like, I don't know why they chose him over other people. Well, some people are, are even thinking that it was actually chosen. The whole thing was chosen because uh, I didn't watch. I didn't watch how he was killed, but other people who watched said they didn't even try to give him you know to resuscitate him usually if somebody is alive mm -hmm. then uh you know they but hardly breathing or whatever then they will try to give him a, a cpr uh and then put him in an am ambulance and the other possibility is he was already dead if somebody's already dead then you draw a line around him you know it's a a, a death scene you know where they try to investigate the death, but they said what they did with him was they just put him in the ambulance without trying to resuscitate him. Why would they do that? That's horrible. Like, I don't understand, like, why that ever happened. Like, I think everything about it was just sick, like, really, like, yeah. that never should have happened to him. It's yeah. silly wrong. Yes. But are there similar cases where it wasn't a black person but it was a white person where they did something similar where there was a man that was like suffocated by the police i've been seeing people talking about this too on facebook but i guess they didn't really talk about that on the national news yeah so that that's what gives all of us a feeling that there is no equality you know that there is no racial equality and that we're yeah, there's some kind of weird game being played. Well, yeah, I don't... All I'm going to say is I think some really bad things have happened, but I haven't spent a lot of time in my life trying to track down the exact like origins of all these stories because I feel like a lot of the social movements right now, they're invested in keeping us divided, but in a few months, there's going to be something else. First it was COVID, now it's this. There'll be another thing next month. Yeah, I, I saw a kind of joke about how there's a new interpretation of the Incan uh, uh, calendar and the world is going to end very soon. <laughs> <laughs> that part's kind of funny. I don't believe in the world ending, but I just think there's a lot of distraction, but there's bad things that happen every day. And no, oh, by the way, there was um, probably a bad mistake, but it turns out a policeman shot another African American man in San Bernardino. I don't know the details exactly, but they said it looked like he was holding a gun, so he just shot him. And that's that's really scary. Like I, I don't know why that happened, but oh my, like probably not a good idea. No. Well, uh, before we end uh, our conversation, can, can you think of anything positive <laughs> that's going on right now? Well, I think there's a lot of positive things going on in the world there, but this is my take on it. And you probably don't, maybe don't agree with me 100% is that I don't feel like following too much of like what's going on, like that's really trending on either Facebook, Twitter or the news is the best way to find that. Like, I feel like, yes, we need to know to some degree, but I am going to really, like, I'm choosing to limit it because for me personally, I just, I feel kind of nauseous. Like, so I do find positivity in the, hey, we can learn about new topics. We can, like, talk about politics, maybe, like, based on, like, different things you've written about, we could do that. Like, there are positive things we can do, but, yeah. I just don't know about the national interpretations or whatever it is. The divisiveness, so to speak, that I just don't find positive. But I do think there's a positive. Okay, Joe Jorgensen, like if people actually wanted to vote, I, mean, I don't know much about her, but she has to be better than George, 
Joe Biden or Donald Trump. That might be interesting to explore her. Do you know much about her yet? Not much. Uh, actually, somebody posted uh, some information about her on my Facebook page. So I yeah. will follow that link and find out more about it. But yeah, she's the libertarian candidate. And I do plan to vote for her. Yeah, I'm voting for her no matter what, because it's, she's got to be better than Biden or Trump. And also, too, all these people that say, we need a female candidate. Well, there you go. You have one this time. And a lot of people didn't want to vote for Jill Stein. Like, I personally voted for Gary Johnson, but they didn't want to vote for Jill Stein because they thought she was just too out there. Like, some of her opinions are just way too out there for some people. Although, you know what's interesting is that her and Ron Paul actually agree on a lot of stuff. So, I don't know. I don't think she was that out there. She just says some things that kind of rub people the wrong way, I think. She is a little more left than I am, personally, but Joe Jorgensen's yeah. probably more balanced, I'm guessing, like, without knowing much about her, but I don't want to say, I don't know much about her at all, so I can't really say. Yeah, so, yeah, I will, I will find out more about her. Uh, yeah. And Nick Sarwark uh, apparently is not going to be the chair very much longer of the Libertarian Party, so there's going to be a change of leadership, I guess, and they're going to uh, decide on that um, in uh, in Florida, I guess. Okay, so they are, question, are they still having a Libertarian National Convention in person or no? Well, they already chose the candidates. Yeah, um, they did. And they did that online. Okay. They are going to have a national convention to choose the officers and to talk about the platform. And they're okay. going to do that in person. Yeah, I hadn't followed it that closely, so I just thought I'd ask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yes, yeah, so there's going to be a change of guard and hopefully it will be all for the best. Okay, sounds good. Okay, well, thanks for talking to me about all this, Julia, and hopefully, yeah, it's, yeah go ahead. I was just saying, it's been a very interesting discussion. Yeah, and hopefully things will get better rather than getting worse. I hope so, too. I think economically, that's kind of my concern, is that I think we need to have a stable economy, but we actually have to be productive in order to have that. So that's going to be remain to be seen is can we open up our businesses enough to remain economically stable all around? That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, hopefully uh, we can do that and go back to being a free country. I would hope so. We'll see what happens. Um, but I'll try to keep a positive mindset about it. <laughs> Me too. So, you know, I look at butterflies and talk to Bo and I stay happy. Yeah, exactly. See, that's what I'm just saying is that at the end of the day, if you consume too much of like one of the two, I'll leave it at that. Anyway, have a good night, Aya. <laughs> good night, Julia.